Above this line, no trees will grow. Below this line, trees will grow. And this is a subdivision right here. You can see like the homes, called the sack, and this is the center park area due to the weather condition. As you can see here, the building constructed on pile, minus 65 Celsius. It was extremely cold. I was wearing three pants and a, and a, and a plastic pants and uh, three socks. They told us to wear very, very heavy clothes. And I still, I was so cold up there. The window was cracked and I told the pilot and he said, oh, just make sure like there is a duct tape, just make sure that the duct tape, it's very tight to the, to the glass. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, myrenovation.net. Today's subject is design and construction along the tree line. Please like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much. The first question that comes in your mind is, what is the tree line? The tree line is the edge of the habitat at which trees are capable of growing. So nothing will grow beyond this line. Tree lines are consistent between the latitude of 30 degree north and 20 degree south. So why? Trees do not grow there. Trees grow all over the world in many different types of weather, but above certain elevations, trees just cannot grow. Think of it like this. Someone draws a horizontal line on the mountains, like this line right here. Above this line, no trees will grow. Below this line, trees will grow. This imaginary line on the earth is called timber line or tree line. I designed many projects along the tree line. After viewing some of this design, we will visit some of the challenges for renovation and construction in this area. Again, this is the tree line right here. And we will visit in the upcoming slides, designs and construction along this area right here.
This design looks like a normal design, but the area between the main floor and the exterior ground from the main floor to the exterior ground is completely different when you design in the, uh, along the tree lines. This is a design of another office building. Another office building also here. In the next few slides, I will show you one of the subdivisions that I designed in Northern Canada. Northern Light Subdivision Project was a visibility study requested by the Housing Corporation based on expected growth in the oil and gas industry within the Beaufort Delta region. And this is a subdivision right here. You can see like the homes, cul-de-sac, and this is the center park area. And this is here uh, at the corner retail and apartment. Northern Lights subdivision project addresses the housing concern voiced by the Northwest Territory Housing Corporation and the government of Northwest Territories. The project is designed to provide accommodation for people at various life stages. The design includes nine building prototypes, including one, two, and three bedrooms houses, each designed with the latest innovations. Also included are four multiplex prototypes, including commercial, retail, and apartment units. By developing the land into lots, the project will generate substantial income to the town during the life of the project through employment, as well as after the completion of the project through taxes. The project itself supports the existing town plan with only very, very minor modifications. Now let's talk about construction along the tree line. So in the next slide, I will present some of the construction document for a senior complex that I designed in Taktaiptak NT. What I'm seeing here is a site plan for this building. This is a vicinity plan and this is a site plan. This is the floor plan and elevation for the complex. This is building section. Pay attention to how we raise the building. As I said in the previous slide, so we raise the building above the ground level and we raise them on piles. Because of raising the building to avoid direct contact with the frozen ground, we end up with very long ram. Now let's talk about the major challenge that buildings are facing after construction due to the weather condition. As you can see here, the building constructed on pile. You see this building? And this is piled, so we raise the building up, we put the building on pile, as we said before. And this is the building, and this is a side pile. This, by the way, this building, it was an existing building that actually uh, we were renovating this building. So, so it is not a new building. During the winter, the ground pushes the pile up. So this is the piles, so during the winter, the ground, the frozen ground, push the pile up and the pile will push the building up, creating all kind of uh, damages to the building and the foundation. So what we do is every year before the start of the winter, we inspect and correct the piles. So we go there and look under the building we actually, we crawl under the building with a flashlight and look at the, at the piles and the footing. And we figure out what's the problem. Like look here, look at this pile, it's just tilted. So we fix it, praise it. And we're gonna talk about uh, this fixing later on, on this video. In the next few slides, we will discuss piles repair.
there are so many ways to repair the existing piles. And this one, we use pile bracket with leaving existing pile top. So this existing pile top, we leave it, and then we use the pile bracket here, and we excavate uh, in order for us to use a pile bracket, and usually the excavation will go uh, about three foot deep. And this one we use also pile brackets with replacing pile top with new. So this will replace the pile top with new. And this one replacing the strap at the beam location. Uh, this is here, I'm showing offset pile details. At this one, this is the bracing details, but we use it as required. So this is the existing pile, this existing pile, when we find out that this pile, it's like, it's getting so weak or uh, something wrong with the pile. So now we place it so in order for the pile. So they, all the pile that will work together when you press it. So uh, in, in the, a few coming slides, we will talk about Northern design and construction challenges. The first challenge is really a major challenge. Logistic and coordination can be tremendously difficult. We cannot just bring a spare part to a remote location without significant planning. It's not just, okay, put it in a truck and bring it, no. Labor supply issues, especially in the skilled trades and profession, nobody wants to work there because of the extreme weather condition and the costs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just like it's very, very uh, costly to live there, especially in the winter when there is no uh, road and they use the ice road and the difference between until the ice road open. Uh, so everything, if I, even like with the banana, uh, fruits, everything uh, arrive to the northern area uh, by plane, which costs a lot of money. The other challenge is the weather. The long winter temperatures typically varies from minus 24 Fahrenheit to minus 40. And actually I work in an area where we used to do a, a tower on the top of the mountains uh, for a, it was a cell tower. And I remember the degree was minus 65 Celsius. It was extremely cold. I was wearing three pants and a, and a, and a plastic pants and uh, three socks. They told us to wear very, very heavy clothes. And I still, I was so cold up there. It is very hard to work outside in this weather condition. So easy you get frostbite in this weather condition. No sunlight throughout days during the winter and no dark throughout days during the summer. What does it mean? Like you would have like three months during the winter that absolutely no sun, no sunlight and three months during the summer, absolutely no dark. So in the middle of the night, midnight, the sun in the middle of the sky. The other challenge, traveling and communication. Most of the road in these areas are gravel and crushed. It's very hard to drive on this uh, crushed gravel road. The first road to Takta Yoktak was officially open to the public on November 15, 2017. And when it comes to flying, it is not safe at all to use this small plane. I have so many stories that one time I was actually, I was sitting on one of this plane and there was a crack, the window was cracked. And I told the pilot, and he said, oh, just make sure like there is a duct tape, just make sure that the duct tape, it's very tight to the, to the glass. Lack of, lack of regulation. And, uh, and the other thing, 
uh, when you fly on this plane, at least uh, during the time when I was working there, uh, they, used, they have only like one pilot. And uh, so what they used to ask us for whoever wanna be the co-pilot. So they give us a little bit of training for like 15, 20 minutes. And then you jump in and you sit next to the pilot and he became the co-pilot just in, for an emergency situation. That's why I said lack of regulation and safety, huge, huge problem there. The biggest challenge is the permafrost. Permafrost is any ground that remain completely frozen, frozen meaning minus 32 Fahrenheit or zero Celsius or colder for at least two years straight. Driving pile is a common method for building on permafrost. We drive piling deep into frozen ground and elevate, and elevate the home several feet off the ground. So this is here, you can tell, this is the pile. We drive this pile into the permafrost and we ele elevate the building a few feet off the ground. So the building that are heated from inside, give off heat. So most of the building, they heat it from inside. So they give up the heat through the floor here. Once a permafrost, once a permafrost thaws, it sink damaging the building. So what usually happen, if the building close to the ground, so the heat will seep through the floors, it will defrost the permafrost. This piles, it will start sinking into the ground and the building will start sinking with it. And of course, it will, the building will not gonna sink uh, with the same level everywhere. So you find cracks and problem everywhere. So, and that's the reason why we put the building a few feet above the ground, so cold the air, will flow under the house or under the building. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope I answered some of the question in regarding building in the colder uh, atmosphere. And uh, thank you again for your subscription. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it and talk to you on my next video and goodbye. To subscribe to my channel, once you click into any video, you'll get this screen. If you find that the word subscribe in red, it means you are not subscribed. Once you click into it, it will change the gray. So red, you are not subscribed. Gray, you are subscribed. Thank you so much for watching.